For Git, the first thing that we're going to do is uh, install the Source Tree app. There are different apps out there and different clients, but I found that when I was starting to use Git, uh, having the right client, client made a big difference. Git uh, Subversion, Tortoise Subversion, and Tortoise Mercurial were great, Tortoise HG and Tortoise SEN, but Tortoise uh, Git wasn't so good for me. So I tried this one, and this seems to help you get started. So this is the one that we're going to be using. So you just download that, and that's going to install this uh, tool. And when you install it, you're going to go to the Setup Wizard, and uh, it's going to pop up this. Uh, window if you don't have Mercurial nor Git installed. In my case, I'm just right now going to say I don't want to use Mercurial. And for the case of Git, what I chose was download an embedded version of Git just for Source Street, which is what I did. Um, then you're going to be putting your name, your email address, so however you're going to be doing your commits. You're going to use PuTTY. And I'm going to show you in a different video how to activate PuTTY. And then if you have any uh, account with GitHub, uh, Bitbucket, or Stash, here's where you would configure it. And then finish. If the connection uh, test takes long, you can just skip the test and you will be fine. All right, so once we have that, the next step is to create a repository. In my case, I'm going to be using uh, Bitbucket, but you guys can use uh, there's GitHub or uh, you can host your own repository. Just for now, we're going to be doing this one. So I'm going to create the repository. And this is going to have the advantage that I can just say clone in source tree. And it's going to launch the application. And uh, it says that uh, it failed to load my keys. I'm just going to say yes and uh, look for where my keys are. And in my case, they are uh, in here. So I'm going to just take my key. And it's going to ask me for the password. And the nice thing about this is that uh, you don't have to, to enter a password every time you do a commit or every time you do a pull or a push. OK, so now this just tells me what, you know, by default, it's going to put it on my documents. And I'm OK with that. And I'm just going to say, OK, clone. So the difference between, you know, subversion or centralized uh, repositories and distributed source code control is that you get a complete clone of your uh, repository. Right now, the clone is empty because I, I don't have anything. So I can go to the folder where it installed um, my, my clone. And we're going to be adding some code in here, OK? So I'm going to launch LabVIEW and create a project. And we're going to do the queue message handler. And I have git demo. And I'm going to be putting on the, on the place where I have my um, clone. Now, it says that the folder is not empty. So we'll just create a different one here for I'm just going to put here lab you code. So there we go. And I'll come back when it's done. And there's my my code, the typical QMH. It works. And we'll just save this and uh, go now to here. And you'll see that I'm magically everything here appeared. So I have all the stuff I need there. Some of the files that I don't want to have under source code control are .aliases and .lblps. So what I'm going to do here is just say that I want to ignore. And I want to ignore all files with that extension. So that will ignore that. OK, and now what we're going to do is we're going to do our commit. And for the commit, we're going to tell it to commit selected files. And right now, it's selecting everything here. OK. OK, once that I put my comment, I'm just going to say commit. And it's telling me everything is going to get added. I'm going to say yes. And the same as with Mercurial, uh, right now, I only have committed. And I probably, you probably will be able to rewind the uh, the video. And you see that I had checked that open commit to do a push. And that's why I don't have to do a separate 
push for now. If we refresh my repository, I should have now on the source, oh, no, it's not there. So the push didn't happen. So I should be able to push. But it's not showing. There it is. So if I go here and do a refresh, there it is. So there's there's our there's our code. So I just needed to wait a little bit for the refresh. So we got everything up. Let's make another small change. And again, this is on the blue computer. And let's go to the main BI and let's just change the front panel color of the and let's put it uh, let's make it a light blue there we go okay so that's a very minor change close we go back to source tree we do a commit and the only thing that changed was main so i'm going to say select files and um, i'm going to put here that we change the front panel color and here I'm not putting, I'm not checking uh, the box for push commits immediately. So it's only going to do a commit. This is handy when you want to do several commits so you have access to be able to go back. And it tells you here how many pushes you have left. So if we go to the repository right now, we won't see any changes. But the advantage of this is that I could be, let's say I don't have access to the internet, I could do several small commits and uh, when I get back and I actually have access to the uh, internet, then I could do a single push. So let's say, for example, that on the local data, we want uh, to get rid of the um, exit button reference. So if I do that and I do save and I close, uh, now I can go back and do a single commit. Again, selected files, select my data, and I'm going to put here removed exit reference. Okay, I'll do commit. And again, nobody's going to see these changes. Now I have two changes. So if I want uh, others in my team to have access to them, then I have to push my changes to all of the existing repositories. And when I do that, now uh, others are going to have access to it. So let's go to a different computer. Here we are on the blue computer. Let's go to the white computer, and this is um, Luis's computer. And here what we're going to do is go to the same place, and we are going to clone. So we are on the, blue, uh, on the white computer. On the white computer, we're going to say that I want to clone. And when I click on clone, I'm going to say I'm going to clone in source tree. And that's going to launch the application. And it's going to ask the same thing. Now, this time I'm in Luis's computer, so I'm going to clone there. And just to show you, now I have, I can go to the master and I can see the same things that we had on the white computer. And it shows that Fabiola made all these changes. So now let's go to um, Luis's computer. And look at the git demo and we have here uh same project so we're going to open the project and you'll see that it's a blue screen and we have a broken arrow because i deleted the exit reference but i didn't remove it from here and we also need to probably get rid of this case delete this event case and now I don't have an exit, but I'm able to stop just by closing the front panel, so we're good. I'm going to save that, save my project, and I'm going to go to do a commit. And in this case, again, selected files. I'm going to select main, and I'm going to say cleaned up broken arrow and removed exit button. Okay, so I'm going to commit that. And now we're going to go back. So that's a commit done by Luis. So we're going to go back to the uh, blue computer. And 
normally what would happen is at the beginning of the day, we would check if they're either fetch or do a pull and check all our changes. But in this case, we're going to go keep making changes without actually checking if there's anything in the repository. And uh, let's now modify on the support. We're going to, in the create user event, we are going to remove the registration of the user event out of here. This is subject for another discussion, but I like to have my registrations for the event to happen as close as possible as event structure. So we're just going to make that change and then go back here and do a commit. Again, selected files, and we're going to put here removed event, user event registration. There we go, and we do a commit. Now, I was able to do my commit. When you are working on uh, centralized use, uh, source code control like Subversion, you wouldn't have been able to do that commit without doing an update. It would have told you that your repository is out of date. In our case, we're fine. Um, same thing, if I try to do a push, that's when we should get uh, the information. No, nope, it still let me do a push. So now I need to check if it's going to let me do a pull. So I'm going to get a pull, and I should get the changes from uh, Luis. No, it seems that Luis didn't push his changes, so that's why I didn't get any complaints. So let's go to his computer and see what happened there. Yep, we never pushed. So now I need to push on his computer. And of course, now I do get an error, and it's going to tell me that failed to push because updates were rejected because the remote contains work that you do not have locally. This is usually caused by another repository pushing to the same reference. You may want to first integrate the remote changes. All right, so let's go and see what is it that Pavirola did while we, um, we were working. And what we have to do here on Luis's computer is do a pull to check what's on the other uh, repositories because this can be done with multiples. And now I can see here that uh, there's my change that I did, and in parallel, Fabiola's computer did other changes. And I can look at the comments. So here we remove the exit reference, Luis clean up the broken arrow, but then Fabiola uh, removed the user event registration, okay? And here is just doing a, uh, the immediate mer merge because that's the checkbox that I had. Now I have two uh, things to push. The commit that I didn't push earlier, where I cleaned the broken arrow, and now my merge of the changes that were done on Fabiola's computer with what was done on Luis's computer. So I'm going to do that. And now we're good. I don't have any alarms here that I'm missing things to push. So that's, again, on this computer. And if we go on the white computer, if we open the project, we'll see that main is broken because we remove the registration. Uh, register for events. For events, okay. So what we need to do is now take the event here and bring this guy here. So window, show from panel. We're gonna save it. And I'm gonna go and do a commit. And now we're gonna, again, fix the by moving the register for events all right so that happens there i'm going to do a commit and again i get my push here if i don't do it the uh, Fabiola's computer on the blue computer is not going to see it. So it's until I actually do push that the other computer is going to see it. So I'm going to push it. Now we're good. So we're going to go to the blue computer. And on the blue computer, we're going to do a pull. And this time I got my little alarm there that there are two pending pulls that I haven't done. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to get a pull. 
Now, the thing that I like is that you can see the subway where you can see where different merges happened and, um, and what was done in parallel. Another thing you can do is that you can go back in time and see what the different uh, users have done. So if you want to go back and see, even though here I'm on, on Fabiola's computer, I can actually go back and see what was the status of Luis's computer. To do that, I right click and I do a checkout. Um, and it, 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 you get a warning that it's gonna you know, create a detached head. So what uh, what that means is that now now the head this little white button is not at the top, but if I look at the lab view code, we'll see that main is blue, but um, it still has the registration inside here. So we actually went back to that uh, case when we got rid of the exit. I can, that's why I, I say that source code control is like having a time machine. And in this case, it's even a time machine that lets you move to different times within different computers. I can go back to here to do that. I do a checkout. Again, I get my warning. And if I go, this is when we remove the user event registration. So you'll see that the main is going to be broken because this is not before we did the fix. This VI no longer has the registration inside, and that's why it's broken. And finally, I can go back, okay, and say, I just want to go to the top level, so let me just check out here, and we'll be at the origin of time. So anyway, there's uh, there's a lot more to get, but this is uh, the basic, basic uh, mechanics on how to set up and uh, get going between different computers. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.